Hello everyone, welcome back to OCD Recovery. Before I go any further, if you could please subscribe down below. There's videos going up, multiple videos going up every single week about particular fears, people's recovery journeys, where we've been, how we've all hit our lowest and so forth. Rob's videos are great, covering great topics, not just, and he's moving towards not just fully OCD recovery right now, but other forms of anxiety recovery and stuff like that as well. So I have a sheet right here, right next to me, and this is gonna give me a format of what I wanted to cover today, because this is a very particular video I see covered pretty incorrectly in the OC community. I understand why people are giving this advice or telling people what to do, but unless you have OCD, it's very, very especially in the chronic format, it's very hard to understand how these tools can become compulsive. So what I wanted to talk about today is called what to do in high moments of panic or severe relapses. I mean, severe anxiety if it's crushing away 24 seven. So first of all, why do we have high panic and why do we have high anxiety? So number one, we have a disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder. As we know, and as Rob says, it makes it feel as real as it can get. If it didn't feel as real as it can get, it wouldn't be the disorder as it is. If we could recover in these, you know, recover in seven days, recover in 10 days, recover in a month, be OCD free in six months. This isn't to say that there aren't some people that can make drastic benefits to their lives and get back on a, you know, a healthy lifestyle track, get back to work if you haven't been working and stuff like that in a six month period. But more than likely, most people I've talked to, if you laid out all of the moderators right now, I believe there's 11 of us, every single one of us have been working on recovery for at bare minimum a year. This isn't to say we've made tremendous progress. I've been working on recovery for almost a year and a half. I was in a mental hospital. But I'm gonna tell you some of the poor advice I was given because they just don't understand because they're not in the shoes of an OCD sufferer. So it's very hard for them not to see it and experience it as we do. Now again, they don't need to experience it. That's why we have people like us, you know? We, we have been in the shoes that you've been in. So again, we're in high panic because we have OCD. We have extreme fears. It doesn't matter if OCD is a genetic condition. It doesn't matter if the cultural environment or back, environmental backgrounds pulled the trigger for the genetics and expressed the chronic anxiety that felt like a light switch that snapped. It doesn't matter. What we know is what we have right now and what we can do to recover. Focusing on the past is a dead end. Psychodynamic therapy, the Freudian way of thinking for OCD recovery. This doesn't mean it can't have benefits in other forms of life and other aspects of looking into things, but if your main form is looking into the past and trying to figure out why you have extreme panic, you are going nowhere. I promise you that. So, but on top of that, you need more than likely to look at the core fear. What is your core fear and then go from there? But that's not what we're gonna talk about in this video because there's plenty of videos to talk about how to properly dispute your rational beliefs from the founder of Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, which came from REBT, Rational Emotive Behavioral Therapy, which was founded in 1955 by Dr. Albert Ellis. So, first things I wanna talk about is what not to do when you're in high moments of panic and why. I'm gonna go into very specific details so you have a very good understanding when you're done watching this video. Number one, disputing your irrational beliefs in the moment as they come. This is a very, very, very bad idea. And so when you're reading the books, How to Stubbornly Refuse, there are parts that say, you know, if it takes a thousand times a day to go over your, you know, disputing thoughts, then do that. That book was not geared towards OCD. So the tools needed for OCD recovery must be modified in order so they do not become compulsive and the best chances. More than likely disputing beliefs will become compulsive at one point in time for every single person that uses them. I will say that again. More than likely disputing from cognitive behavioral therapy will become compulsive more than likely for every single one of us. We've all done it because we, what happens is we find a tool and we see this tool that's helping us get relief. So we go, holy shit, this is really, really giving me some relief. I'm gonna do it more and more and more and that's not how it works. You cannot force acceptance. So in high moments of backdoor spikes, Kirsty's done videos on backdoor spikes, Oliver's done videos on backdoor spikes, it's very, 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 very pertinent of you to not focus on disputing in that moment and do your best to go throughout your day. If you're in early stages of recovery and you fall back into a compulsion or two because your anxiety is so high and you have a belief that you can't stand it, show yourself some self-compassion, try your best not to have self-pity and dwell and move on from there. We all make mistakes along our OCD recovery journey. Number two, what we see is and what I see the most common, even from the top centers of OCD recovery on earth, is giving people techniques to run. Now, unless you have OCD, 
Again, this isn't to, to put anyone down. Unless you have OCD, I understand why this is used. We have to talk about this in very, 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 very minute details. Okay, breathing, yoga, and meditation, all particular. Let's talk about meditation and mindfulness. We'll put them in one category. Meditation and mindfulness, okay? It's a buzzword. It's great. We all see things like this. Even for gen pop, do meditation 15 minutes a day. Become aware of the present moment and all your problems will be fixed. It sounds very easy. Humans have a major propensity towards a low frustration tolerance. So if you have a very low frustration tolerance and you believe that you could just do some meditation for 15 minutes and all your life problems will go away, I got news for you. It's not reality as much as you want to be. So this isn't to say that the power of now book by Eric Toll or however you say his name can't be really beneficial. It can. There's really great things about being present in the now. But to say that the only thing is being present in the now this can actually be a major compulsion for many people, and they don't see that unless they have OCD. I've never seen a therapist ever in my life ever speak about how mindfulness meditation can become compulsive. I've never seen it one time, and I'm telling you right now, it is probably one of the most non-talked about compulsive manners. If I just live in the now and I'm just focused on the now, all my problems will go away. That is the opposite of acceptance. That is the opposite of complete surrendering to your fears while working on recovery and looking at the worst case scenario. This is very, 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 very intricate detail stuff. It's not very complex to the grand scheme of OCD recovery, but if it's not covered properly, you can go years spinning your wheels thinking, well, I'm doing you know mindfulness meditation, I'm doing breathing, I'm doing yoga, and I'm not getting the relief I want to see. You might see 10, 20, 30 arbitrary number relief, but you're not going to get the full release you need. I'll say this right now. You can do yoga, meditation, breathing, all of the focusing on the now and get minimal relief. You can never do any of that. Look at me. No meditation, no yoga, no breathing. Well, I did yoga the other day because my wife forced me to, but not for the purpose of recovery. No yoga, no breathing, no meditation. Not that I'm saying these can't be beneficial, and I've made extreme progress just by working on my fears. Think about what I just said. You cannot more than likely recover with chronic OCD by just doing yoga, meditation, breathing techniques if you never touch your core fears. You will spin your wheels forever. I promise you that right now. So now there's a big difference between doing these things in a healthy manner for a balanced lifestyle and actually running from your fears. Sorry, my uh, wife is printing something right now. So the main thing about this is pretty clear. Having a good lifestyle and good balance can be very, very beneficial for the OC recovery you know, journey. But overall, you more than likely are going to need to accept that you're going to be anxious for quite some time. When I talk to people, and the more I'm involved in the community, the more people I talk to, the first thing they do is they come to me telling me they're doing these certain tools. When they tell me they're doing these certain tools, they're more than likely using them to escape. I'm sitting in my, let's use somatic OCD for an example. I'm sitting in my bed focusing on my sensation. I'm going throughout the day hyper-focused on my sensation to, to get used to it. Yes, while this can be a decent exposure, you are more than likely going to be blinking, breathing, salivating, having your heartbeat, seeing the bridge of your nose on and off for the rest of your life. That exposure is already there. These fears come from acceptance of the worst case scenario. If you notice the bridge of your nose for the rest of your life, it might be annoying, but it might not be, it's not going to be the end of the world that you see it as. This is missed on a grand scheme level in OC recovery and leaves people entirely hopeless. Again, in order to fully understand this, you more than likely need to have OCD. What not to do, number three, laying in bed. Now, if you're extremely exhausted and you're going about your day and you've been working on recovery in the beginning, you're going to be exhausted. Every once in a while, it's okay to sit down. But if your number one goal is to lay down and rest every single time you feel, feel anxious, you're not going to get anywhere. I know that's hard to hear, but I promise you right now, you are not going to get anywhere. Dealing with uncomfortable sensations and feeling those anxiety sensations is exactly how you're going to move forward. Whilst working on your fear, while working with someone who truly un understands OCD, while doing exposures of deemed necessary and living with uncertainty. Every single fear will need a combination of these things. I do not know anyone with chronic OCD at the chronic severe format that it is locked 
24 hours a day as it was for me and many of the other moderators who do not have to dispute their core fears. Again, I will not be covering how to dispute your core fears because this is going this is covered in multiple other videos. So what to do? Absolutely nothing. If you are in a high moment of panic, extreme panic, having a severe the relapse is, the, is more than likely the tougher one um, if you've been feeling good for a while. You, you'll see that when, once they happen because they will happen. Paul Little and I both had relapses at the same time recently, and um, uh, I believe Oliver had one as well, and I've talked to all uh, both of them at the same time around this. When you're feeling good for an extended period of time and OCD hits you with a relapse, it's so easy to think, this is the worst I've ever felt. More than likely, not the worst you've ever felt. It just feels really bad because you haven't felt like this in a while. My wife just told me this two weeks ago when I was having a other complete meltdown. I'm going to be very, 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 very real with you. So this happens along the OC recovery journey, peaks and troughs like Rob said. But the goal is to do nothing. You need to try your best to go throughout your day while dealing with those uncomfortable, remember, sensations, images, urges, thoughts, all of that. It's all treated the same exact way. Acceptance is a full surrender. Even if it's blasting away the background, excuse me, even if you're out to dinner and 5% of your attention is on dinner and the rest is away being blasted away by maybe POCD images or thoughts or somatic sensations or existential fears, that's okay for that to be there. There's no universal law that states that that cannot be there. Once you start working on this over time, the recovery journey becomes a lot easier. This is why educating yourself from people who actually can see the inside aspects of OCD is extremely important. This isn't saying someone without OCD, again, I have to say this, cannot help you. They can, but more than likely, the benefits from OCD coming from someone that's been there is going to be absolutely huge. So that's big. So doing nothing. So that's what I wanted to talk about today, just the basic aspects of doing nothing when you're in a high moment of panic or relapse, going throughout your day as best as you can. Once your anxiety subsides a little bit, then you can dispute a little bit and go about your day in that regard. But until then, if you're having a severe relapse right now, if you're in extreme anxiety, just move throughout your day. And don't forget to subscribe down below. Thank you.